Hey, everybody. Welcome. We're so glad you could join us today. Uh, and if you're picking us up, you weren't able to join us live and you're hit, picking us up on an instant replay. Welcome to you as well. We're delighted that you have joined us. And uh, I'm Pat Hand, for those of you who may not know. Uh, and uh, this is my sidekick, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Hi. How's everybody? And we are here to talk about an iconic brand in the cruise market today, Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, you know, Kevin, Carnival has come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> For they had to... Uh, a pretty inauspicious beginning to that cruise line, I must say. And I thought we'd just go over a little bit of that history because it is kind of fun. Uh, it, it goes all the way back to 1972. And uh, Ted Aronson at that point had a brainstorm. He thought cruising was could really catch on uh, if uh, the younger, more vibrant, energetic uh, market could uh, take their party on board a cruise ship. Uh, so he, he bought himself a used ship, a uh, fairly hard used ship, as I recall the story. And uh, uh, he he really, well, he rechristened it. It was the Mardi Gras. And, and uh, money was pretty tight for him back in those days, trying to get a new cruise line off uh, the ground. So he really only had uh, funds to paint one side of that <laughs> vessel. <laughs> so Pat, they, Pat, I I found a picture of that 1972 Mardi Gras. That's the one. That is it. Yeah. So Carnival it, has come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't see any water slides. <laughs> no, no, it it doesn't look much like the fun ships that we know today. But, but that that was it. That was that was the old Mardi Gras. And, and to add insult to injury, uh, you know, so they've got they've got this old uh, cruise vessel, and and their very first cruise. They managed to run that ship aground on a sandbar in the <laughs> port. <laughs> so they did get off to a really great start. And, and I've laughed at that story before. I first heard it, actually, from one of their uh, business development yeah. offers uh, or, or business development managers back in uh, Cruise World uh, some years ago. And I laughed. It just cracked us up to think about Carnival where it is today. And that that kind of shaky start they got, but fortunately, uh, things went better for them. Go, moving on, they they weren't deterred. And, and uh, Aronson was kind of brilliant at his marketing. He he really did a great job, and he really he 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 hit a sweet spot. You know, uh, he he kind of he figured it out that that these these young people had had. Uh, they were look, wanting something new to do. They wanted to, to have fun, and taking it aboard a cruise ship was just a really good uh, idea, and it caught on quickly. Um, and and uh, as as we all know, the cruise line has been incredibly successful over the years. It uh, and, and even today, even. Uh, after retiring a number of ships this year due to the COVID crisis, they've taken advantage of that and, and retired uh, several of their old fantasy class ships. But they still have 24 ships in their fleet. And, and as many of you know, the Car Carnival Corporation is actually the parent company to Carnival Cruise Lines and uh, a bunch of other cruise lines, including such uh, iconic brands as uh, Princess and Holland America, Costa, uh, and several several brands out there. They're the largest in the whole world. Well, those other brands are part of Carnival, uh, the Carnival umbrella. Then, absolutely, yes, uh, they're all okay. owned owned by Carnival, and, and, and it goes the gamut from, from the, the budget-friendly Carnival brand, uh, the Costa brand, and and then they have a number of luxury brands, the premium and luxury, so they kind of cover the whole spectrum 
in the cruise line uh, from from the uh, uh, young, uh, vibrant cruise enthusiasts to to the more you know the, those of us who, who like the Holland America traditional cruise experience. You can all find that, and they're all under the Carnival Cruise Corporation umbrella. Uh, but I, I know our our uh, viewers today are likely with us because they want to know more about Carnival and and. Uh, I just want to address something to you cruise snobs out there. You know, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> you know who you are. You, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to consider going on carnival as somehow you have a, this preconceived idea of what uh carnival is like. And it's based on that, that uh, demographic that they once that they started out with the, you know, the, the, uh, young cruisers who like to party hardy and and uh, and I've been on those short cruises a time or two and, and yeah they can get a little raucous out there <laughs> uh, you know it could get a little noisy I, I know there was one time in the middle of the night that we were awakened by somebody who had uh, uh, was coming down the hallway and had obviously uh, uh, drunk her fill let's say and she was she was pretty noisy out there in the hallway carrying on but uh but those are the, had, had the drink package did she, she? I, I am sure she had that drink package and, and for those of you who may not have been on carnival in the past 20 years or so uh i i kind of always think that that the brand almost has a, a dual personality you do have those short cruises that the, those uh, three nighters that are geared to people uh, who are younger, looking for a, a real budget friendly uh, getaway, and and you know they want to party all night, and and they do. Uh, but but you have another part of that brand that is totally different. When you get to to uh, let's say the five to seven night and longer cruises with Carnival. You have an entirely different demographic on board those ships. Uh, it, it's not the same experience that you would have on one of those three night cruises on one of the older ships. And uh, you, when we get through with this broadcast today, and you've got these ideas that you, Carnival is is not for you. Maybe we'll share a little bit of information that might enlighten you a little bit, and you might want to go back and reconsider uh, when, when, as we we go through here today and talk about some of the the new things on the horizon, and and well, it's not just on the horizon. Uh, ever since the year two thousand, really, Carnival has uh, uh, just kind of uh, expanded their audience a good bit and uh, now offer a, a wide variety of experiences to attract uh, even, even people who, who uh, like a, a touch of luxury in their cruise experience. Well, you know, uh, uh, on the Carnival uh, ships I've been on, Pat, it seems like there's a real focus on families uh, on Carnival. Right. Right. Carnival is a great brand and you're always going to see uh, a number of young families on board, whether it's a, a shorter cruise or one of the longer cruises. That's one of the broad appeals. You've got you've got the young people uh, that are the solo travelers that come on to, to uh, a party. Then you have the young families and they offer an incredible array of experiences and amenities for, for those young families. They have some of the best children's programs that you will ever see for uh, families on, on their programs. And, the, and when we talk about this, they're not just hiring people off the streets and bringing them in to watch the kids. It's not just some some babysitters they've hired. That They bring on people who actually uh, have backgrounds and education in early childhood education and so forth. So these people are, are qualified and they love what they do. They love working with the children. And that comes across because they love the kids and the kids love them. And they love, and folks, we all know when we're traveling with the kids, when the kids are happy, everybody is happy. Uh, when the kids aren't, you know, that can really uh, ruin a vacation when they're bored and they will not be bored on a carnival cruise. They're going to love it, whether they're whether they're two or whether they're 
15. There are uh, there are just great kids programs available for for the the toddlers and the teens. So great choice. Well, Pat, I think whether they're two or whether they're seventy five, they'll find something <laughs> to do on Carnival. Uh, you know, I've been on several Carnival cruises, and I've never, never ha- had one that I felt there wasn't plenty to do and plenty of fun to have and. I, you know, I, they're one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just a very tough, you know, you can put aside your pretensions and just go, go, go on board with a mindset of, uh, you know, just sit down, sit down the, you know, pretensions, just be ready to have fun and enjoy your experience. Uh, Kathy and I, uh, back in, I think it was early February, but just one of the last things that we did, uh, we just wanted a little girls getaway. My, so my sister and I got on board Carnival Liberty out of uh, Port Canaveral over there for a four night cruise. And I want to tell you, we had a great time. This is the the pool area there. Uh, the I think this is the main pool area, and they have a couple of pools on there. And um, we did, we had a great time. The food was great. Um, it, oh, this, I, is, this is where I hang out. Okay, you there? The red frog. Red, the red frog. Run. This is a very that and the blue tequila. Uh, tequila bar are two of the most always, and you'll find them on pretty much every carnival ship now. Yeah, it's the blue iguana. The tequila blue iguana, that's what it is. Blue iguana yeah. tequila bar. Thank you for straightening me out there. But yes, that uh just fun places to hang out. And uh you you can even get uh, oh, there's John, the guy in the middle. That was our waiter on board. And you know, folks, it was just such fun. He he was such so fun. You know, these waiters are can dance too. Uh they always put on a show at the in the dining room. So like I said, it's fun. Uh on the left there you have kind of the uh the mezzanine, the area you kind of stroll down there. Uh that's on the Liberty. And then John, that was our waiter. Uh he was just just fun and and talk about clean. Here's just a, a random snapshot. And this here is is the red frog again as one morning when, when we were just up and wandering around. Uh I mean they're cleaning the rungs and the everything on the uh the bar stools. Folks, it was the cleanest place. Oh, fun factor. <laughs> Just get out this. That's one of the cruise directors. I mean, they're just having fun. And and I don't care if you're 17 or 70. You could get out there and you could just have fun. Girls getaways. All of these things are are, are there. And, and, you know, just be ready to have fun on Carnival. That is the one thing that is a given on a Carnival brand. And, and But, uh you just you can't go wrong uh and uh but but book i suggest you always i book that five day or longer getaway you're gonna have a better experience you're gonna have nicer ships uh you're gonna have a uh more to do on the these newer ships but they continue to just up their game have uh more sophisticated ships at a and they're bringing them on board at about one a year kevin just you, you know, uh, even and so, like I said, even with retiring uh, several of their their old uh, fantasy class ships this year, still have twenty four different vessels, and um, they're, they're just great. Kevin, what about groups on on Carnival? Well, I've been on a few cruise lines with groups, um, or, but I, I enjoy Carnival because they're so easy to work with, uh, with a group. Um, the, uh, the, having a group on a cruise ship is perfect because you can, it's multi-generational. So you've got, everyone can do everything they want to do. Uh, you can have your group get togethers when you want, but then, you know, there can be too much togetherness and there's time where you can go ahead and get away from 
everyone else and do your own thing. So they are so, I mean, they are like designed for reunions, things like that. And speaking of, we've actually have one coming up. Um, there's a there's an area in Kansas City, Missouri, that that's called Northeast, and uh, it's a it's a neighborhood that has a, a real history of Kansas City. There, there's a Northeast High School, which. Uh, uh, I graduated from, but the Northeast neighborhood is so uh, family oriented and it, all the people that live there still get, still get together. And it, it's, there's a sense of pride for being from Northeast. And so we're actually uh, having a Northeast neighborhood cruise. You don't have to have gone to the Northeast high school. If you lived in the northeast area of Kansas City, come visit this cruise. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun um, because, again, you can meet people that grew up in the neighborhood. You can share stories, and there's nothing better than a group cruise on a cruise ship. You know, groups are. I mean, it is just an incredible venue for, for any. On any cruise line, the taking them aboard, whether whether you're talking about a girls' getaway or something like a a, a social event like the the Northeast Neighborhood Cruise, or or maybe even a business seminar type event uh, uh, for a seminar at sea, uh, it, it is just really a great venue to have. Uh, and, and there's so many ways to approach it. You can have your private meetings. You can have networking events. You can just have a cocktail party. Uh, so, so each one is different and, and customized to, to the group's needs and, and whether it be a simple, uh, family reunion or, or something with, with, uh, where you need breakout sessions and, uh, multiple seminars and, and so forth. Uh, take it aboard a cruise ship. Just yeah. you multiply the fun. It is a great, unforgettable. And you can do so many things because, uh, you can add these amenity points and really pile on the stuff for people to, you know, all of these special things happening on board where they get, uh, you know, um, maybe on board credit and wine and chocolates in the stateroom and things because it, those are the kind of things that make it memorable. And it's very carnival makes it so easy to pile on these extra things that make it special and unforgettable. And that's one of the things they, they're just so good. Carnival is the best to work with for, for groups when it comes to taking a, a group on board a cruise ship. We just love working with them. Well, we did a, uh, we did a, uh, re Union cruise of some work folks that people worked together back in 2013, and they had so much fun. They got to they decided to get together every two years on a cruise, and they were consistent with that until uh, now uh, until 2021. But, or 2020. Uh, I'm hoping, folks. I hope that uh, those group uh, that group will want to get together again. Yes, yes. They, they were in, they really, that was their first one in 2013, and they just all fell in love with it. Yeah, and and, and they've always done Carnival. And, and you know, th there's a lot of reasons for that. Carnival is budget friendly. It's always at a great price point when you, when you uh, book through Carnival with your, uh, whether it's group or individual tra travel, but, but uh, you have great food. I mean, the, the food on Carnival is, People are always kind of surprised, but I have found the crew, the food on board Carnival to always be extremely good, and and they offer things an array of spa services. Uh, they have adults only hideaways where you can can uh, do that. The adults only area where you can hang out and and uh, be away from the the kids and the the splashing in the pool some of the some of them have adults only pool areas uh there's an array of of entertainment and and activities uh so whether you just want to hang quiet and do do nothing at all or whether you want to do trivia or bingo or art auctions whatever you whatever really appeals to you 
you're pretty much going to be able to find that on board a Carnival cruise vessel. Uh, one of the things they've really upped their game, Kevin, is the, the food as well. In there, uh, uh, you, you mentioned the beginning, 1972 Mardi Gras, and there's a new ship coming out. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I do want to spend some time talking about their new vessel that's actual, actually already launched, but they haven't been able to take her out yet. Uh, the Carnival Mardi Gras, the namesake <laughs> to that old original ship. Uh, and this is a huge vessel. Uh, well, look at this, Pat. That's the wow. 19, That's the original 1972 Mardi Gras, and now behind it is the the brand new <laughs> Mardi Gras. Wow! I mean that 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 is something to look at. I who would who could even that the the original Mardi Gras just looks like a toy, of yeah. sitting next to her big sister, and, and this this new ship is by far the the new Mardi Gras is by far the largest ship. Uh, ever launched by by Carnival, and she's really bringing a lot of firsts uh, for for not only for for Carnival, but but also for the cruise industry. There's a certain uh, activity that has never been on board a cruise ship prior to Mardi Gras. It's called the Bolt, and it is. You know, I've got a little short video about that roller coaster called the Bolt. Oh, and I also have an, another video uh, that's an overview of the entire ship. So, which you want to watch the bolt? The bolt let's first. Watch the, yeah, let's start with the bolt. Bring okay, it on. Here, here we go. Everybody, uh, buckle your seat belts. Wow, so Kevin, would you ride it? Truthfully, uh, yeah, why not? I think I would too. I really, yeah. I think I would. I mean, uh, uh, fasten your seatbelt. I mean, you, you know, it's safe. They they wouldn't do it otherwise. And and uh, now you got that second video. You want to bring it up now? Yeah, I've got it. It's it's a, another short one minute. This one's like one minute, but it it just like an overview of the entire ship of everything that's on it. So here yeah. you go. Take a peek. How many ways can you say wow? <laughs> that that is oh. that is amazing. And, and you spell it backwards, it's wow. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I can't I, I mean, I don't care who you are. If you didn't see some places in that video for you to plug in and, and have some fun on that ship, folks, you're an old fuddy duddy, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. If you if you didn't see some places where you would have fun on that on that ship because there it there really is something for everyone, uh, and and you know this ship is is 
kind of taken a play from a certain other brand that I can name. The the, the name starts with R, but this this ship is so big that that they are they have divided up. They don't call it neighborhoods on this ship. They call it zones uh, and districts. Uh, so they have a different name for it. But but that's that's what they've done. They to make it easier to find your things. If you saw that, uh, you had like almost it's almost like a food truck kind of area there where where you go through and find all these quick grab a bite to eat kind of places. Uh, so again, something for everybody. And then you've got, uh, uh, you know, I mean, how much fun is that? You just kind of, it's almost like going to the fair and, and uh, stopping in and getting something from, from all of the, the food stands. And then you have the elegant dining on board and, and alternative dining uh, and fine wine. So, uh, you know, whatever you're looking for, it's going to be on the ship. Um, accommodations. Um, it's also they have some amazing array of a, of uh, rooms on this ship and, and state rooms. Uh, you you have of course you have your standard interior rooms and your ocean views, but you you have things like uh, uh, the Havana state rooms that have been very popular that have their own special hangout space uh, that are open only to people who book this stateroom category. Uh, uh, your cloud nine spa staterooms for those who are into spa. Uh, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's that's the spa suite, I think, Pat. Yeah, doesn't that just make you say, ah, oh, so restful. Um, the family harbor suite. Uh, this is one. I don't know if we have a picture of that, but it's. Uh, I don't. I don't think we do. But this is one no. of the, the one of the larger suites, um, and the, these. All of these suites then have access to uh, a private area called the Loft 19, which is a uh, hangout space. So they just really have an array of staterooms. Um, I did mention that that uh, uh, stateroom category with with the family harbor that accommodates five people and uh, has a nautical theme. So. There's all kinds of places. The Havana state rooms are more colorful. The spa state rooms were very understated and were kind of spa-like in their their feel. So uh, again, you have a wide variety there. Just just some a great deal of appeal for for everyone. I've got it, Pat. I I have another video that shows some of the suites. I don't oh, know. Bring it up. Why not? It's our it's, show. We can do whatever. <laughs> it's, I'm not sure it's going to show anything different than the the pictures I show, but let's let's see. I'll start it here. Check it out. Well, that gave a really good or overview, and so uh, it was fast, but <laughs> yeah, but does kind of gives you a, a glimpse there, folks. If you are a cruise snob and you want your luxury, and there's nothing wrong with that, I kind of like it myself. Uh, I'll admit it. So if you if you like your luxury, you can get it on board this ship and still have the fun factor of, of the carnival sailing. So it kind of brings everything together. Uh, the fun factor plus a touch of elegance, and there, your there's, fun there's the fun factor, and then you've got the elegance. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and they are not mutually exclusive. So, folks, as of now, Carnival is scheduled to to return to sailing on in April. I'm hopeful. Uh, I I have you know, but quite frankly, we had a couple of cruise lines who. Ex extended their pause into May. Excuse me here. A little bit of a throat tickle. <coughs> Is that a Budweiser? 
<laughs> it's a Coke Zero. You oh, know okay. me. You, you know me. But uh, I, I'm hopeful that they'll cruise in April. Uh, the inaugural cruise for the Mardi Gras is actually scheduled. I believe it's the 21st of April. The last I checked, there's still some space available. So if you're wanting to take a cruise, why not book that carnival cruise now? Take advantage of the best fares. They're going to go up. It's unavoidable. You're not going to gain anything by waiting. Get get your uh, your space reserved now. And well, they've got some pretty good. Not only not only the good deal, and I'm getting an echo. I don't know if you are. I'm not here. I'm not hearing okay. it here. Okay, uh, but they've got some pretty good price protection things uh, going on as well. So you're not at risk. Uh, you're you're only going to gain by getting the better price now and you can't lose because of the price protection program right right you you know if you book and you decide not to go for whatever reason or your sailing is canceled uh they have some they have some great special uh deals running now as they always do but if you uh book by the end of january you can book uh all the way into 2023 price protected uh, so if if uh, the the price on your cruise should go down, that's not going to happen, folks. But uh, or if there should be any reason that you can't sail, you're protected there too. Um, and, and we're going to add something so so you can book all the way into 2023 right now under the special offers they have that are running through the end of January. And if you book by the end of January, I'm going to throw in a special offer. Anybody who books a carnival cruise of five nights or more all the way into 2023, you book through Dancing Moon Travel, we will throw in a $50 onboard credit. Just reach out to us here at uh, Dancing Moon Travel and we will find the cruise that meets your preferences at a time when you are available to go. And um, I guess that kind of covers carnival. I do want to mention next week. Hey, Pat, real real quick before next week, and I'm glad we're getting off here because this echo is driving me nuts. Must be my headset. But the $50 offer, can that be used? Anything on board the ship, can it be used for the shore excursions? That Right. That, 50, that $50 onboard credit will just offset anything that you buy on board the ship. It'll just be on your account as a credit. So if you purchase shore excursions, uh, while you're on board, if you buy something in the shop, your your uh, premium dining, if you go to one of the, the uh, extra fee dining establishments, or you want to have a drink or two, uh, okay. whatever whatever you purchase, that $50 credit will just come right off the top. And the casino as well. Um, casino as well. So... Uh, what, whatever kind of whatever the fun you're into, will you, that fifty dollar credit will uh, be on us. Okay, all right. Well, tell us about next week. Okay, next week we have a not only a brand new ship, we have a brand new cruise line. We're going to talk about. Uh, we have our guest from uh, Julia Glick, the uh, business development manager for. Virgin Cruise Lines. We're going to have a great overview of Virgin. And folks, let me tell you something. They are they are bringing, bringing a, a whole new cruise experience. It ain't your grandma's cruise ship <laughs> on Scarlet Lady. Uh, I mean, uh, when's the last time you were on a cruise ship that had a tattoo parlor? I don't need I say more. <laughs> But and, and the new ship is called Scarlet Lady, right? Scarlet Lady. And yeah. yeah. So you want to join us next week, and we hope to see you then. Yes, we do. Thanks, Thank you very everybody. much. We'll talk to everybody later. Bye now.